think uh, maybe facing you know new competition this week uh, with these joint practices coming up? Yeah, really looking forward to it. Um, it's always good to get out there against someone else. Um, you know, you get used to going against the same guy. You know, every day versus practice during practice. So, it'd be good to get some new faces. Um, you know, we had him last year for a joint practice, so kind of know what to expect too. How are you, just like from a confidence level? Because it seems like you're playing with much more confidence. You know, watching you in practice and, and everything. Yeah, I mean, I feel like from first year to last year to this year, confidence is, is definitely a lot higher. Um, I've said it before, just confidence in knowing what to do, you know, knowing the playbook really well, um, just allows me to play a lot faster. And then, you know, getting healthy, getting right this off season, and trusting the work that I put in. What did you see from maybe the young guys that played on, on Thursday and did you give kind of pointers to guys or get, or get feedback from guys after, you know, after playing? Yeah, I mean, I love watching them out there. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, guys were making plays. You know, everybody was making plays all over the field. Um, it's just great to see the growth and, and, you know, things that we worked on in practice before the game, seeing those applied and people making the, the right choice and, and not making the same mistakes. Uh, Nick, looking at Racy and the growth he's shown, Todd talked earlier about how that 48-yarder, uh, he might have, you know, last year gone out of bounds with it. Uh, are you seeing in the room and, and on the field, are you, what do you see out of him in his second year? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot more confidence, too. Uh, I feel like fr probably in the same way, I, I can't speak for him, but I feel like he just knows what to do, so he's able just to play fast um, and, and not think as much. And I feel like, you know, I'm really excited to see what he's going to do this year. What's camp now as far as how you prepare yourself for the season compared to when you first came in the league as far as watching film, knowing how to treat your body, know how to do the little things? Yeah, I feel like it, it gives you a little bit more free time just because you're not trying to figure it all out. You know, your rookie year, a lot of it's all new, so you're trying to figure out your routine, when to take care of your body, how to do it, you know, when you can study, when you can't. And so now it's kind of having that, that routine under my belt, and it allows me to have a little bit more free time where I can enjoy my off time. Uh, and it makes it more exciting when I do come out here and have to go to work. Do you sometimes get the urge to get back out there on, on special teams, being as though like that's where you really made your mark before you became one of the regular receivers? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's there's still a lot of fun things to do on special teams, and you know, I feel like I'll still have have a role there. Um, and you know, I'm just really gonna do whatever they tell me to do. So if they they need me on all four, I'll do all four. If they only want me on one or two, I'll do one or two. But you know, every any time I'm out there on special teams, I'm just gonna give it my all. Nick, I remember in the off season program you talked about like trying to be more explosive this year, like kind of taking that next step like in yards after the catch. Um, I, I know you haven't played in, in a, a game yet, but how do you feel like maybe you've been able to work on that um, at practices so far? Yeah, I feel like, you know, running through the catch, being able to, you know, attack the ball and be confident through that. So that way, you know, there's a little bit more separation when I do catch the ball and it's not, you know, a bang, bang play or, or being able to catch, you know, tuck the ball away and get a stiff arm out there. So. Working on a lot of those drills out here, um, even in jog through, just trying to have the mentality of like I'm trying to score whenever I have the ball. Who who is your favorite receiver in in the receiver room? Uh, the right answer. Um, <laughs> you know, there's so many great ones, but I feel like you know the top one. My favorite, you know, my dog since day one here at, at Tennessee, probably be Mason Kinsey. I like that answer. <laughs> Shane, uh, you're getting ready for the joint practices, and the starter for the uh, Bucks won't be on the field uh, for either the practices or the game. How, do, do you miss not one and not going against the starter in that situation? And how much can it, you know, would you like to be going against? Him? Yeah, I mean, anytime you can go against Brady, it's it's. I think it's eye opening. Just our experience with him with what he's done and how he practices, how he carries himself. I think our guys learn a lot and kind of see what that is. Um, but in terms of the actual reps and the practice, whoever we're going against, we got to go out there and execute and do our job. And it's going to be good to see the matchups across the board, not just obviously Brady and everybody else, but up front, outside, inside. So there's still going to be a lot of evaluation going on, and it's going to be a big challenge for us, and we'll kind of see where we're at. Getting Elijah uh, Molden back out there today. That, that that nickel competition, him and McCreary. How are you seeing that car carry on? Yeah, I mean, I think as as we get going, continue to go forward here, and those guys are back out there, and we're playing a little bit more. Um, we'll kind of see where how that unfolds. You know, like right now, it's kind of tough because 
I mean, Elijah's working his way back. Roger's kind of working his way back. He's had a few days here. So um, I think as we get a little bit further into it, we'll kind of get a better gauge for where that thing's at. And what about a guy like Sha Shakur yeah. Brown? You know, he's come in and got really good reps. What do you like from him? Yeah, I think he's done a really good job since he's been here. I think he's taken ownership of the position in terms of communicating, understanding what his job responsibility is, um, not really concerned with them in terms of the scheme. I think he can go out there and execute, help the guys next to him. So I've been pleased with what he's done here in his time. A lot of guys played a lot of different combinations, but what were your biggest maybe takeaways from, from first time out? Yeah, I mean, it's never as good, never as bad as you think. Um, I mean, uh, there's a few things. I think letting them run it in the red zone was a little discouraging to me. Um, we got to be better there after sudden change, something we preach. Um, and then some of the X play showed up. And again, it's evaluation process. We're going to be playing some man, you know. So, I mean, we just got to be able to win those one on ones down, down the field. When you got guys banged up in the secondary like you do, and you got another team coming in, I mean, do you see this? Oh, crap. I want our top guys to go up against some more. Do you see his opportunities for the younger guys to, to get some quality runs? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both, right? Like, we want our guys out there. We want everyone out there all the time, right? Um, but at, at the same time, if somebody's not up, we always preach next man up. We lived it last year, right? Um, so it is. It's going to be a big opportunity for guys. If, if guys aren't going to certain spots, to step up and kind of see what they can do. Had his came in bird. here last week and – you sort of picked things up on the fly, I guess, played a good bit yeah. Thursday night. What what'd you like about him? What what did he show? Yeah, I like the speed, man. You, you see him flying around. He had a – on the screen play, I think he darted from the opposite hash and tackled the dude without breaking stride on the sideline there. So, I think his speed showed up. It might be a, a credit to having some fresh legs, right? Um, but he's he's done a good job. I think he's trying. He's trying to learn. We put a lot on those guys in the back end. Um, and I've been pleased with him, but definitely – Probably the biggest thing is just the speed. Shane Taylor gotten his first game action in what, like 10 months or, or so. How, how do you feel like he looked and just kind of getting back? Yeah, I, th I thought it was good. It's great for him to be out there and playing right now. You know, the more reps he can get in practice and more reps he can get in the game like situations, probably the better. Um, because he's still getting acclimated to this game, to this level, to the NFL. He had a, a few games there last year before he got hurt. Um, so, again, we're going to try to get everything we can out of him in these games and let him get some reps and see where it's at just so he can learn and be out there and get a feel for how it's going to go. How the pack of defensive linemen behind Simmons and Autry maybe sorting themselves out, doing it, differentiating themselves? Yeah, I, I think those guys are battling. I do. It's it's kind of funny because each day it's it's really someone else, right? So we're constantly looking for that consistent guy that's going to kind of separate himself day in and day out. But, I mean, between – D walk, hand, strong, obviously Tart and Aquan who played a lot of ball for us. Like we're really just looking for a little bit of separation from that group. And it's a good problem to have, don't get me wrong, when guys are having good days, everything else, but just that consistency to really take ownership of that role. How much do you think that experience at Tampa last year ended up helping you guys once this season again? Especially, you know, you Brady and who you're going against. Yeah, there. tremendously. I do. I I think any time you can get away from playing your own guys, um, I think for one, just the energy, you're kind of in a law of training camp at some point as, as much as we want to fight through it. Um, but getting to go against some fresh faces, right, is always encouraging. And, and it, it forces our guys to kind of have to learn their skill sets, right, where it's not the same guy in pass rush. It's not the same guy I'm covering in one-on-one. -on -one. So it, it's somewhat game-like related where you have to kind of learn the skill set of the guy you're going against. But um, – and the scheme stuff, like different schemes. So I think it's a great benefit to be able to do this. Well, you got to see Malik in live game action. Uh, what's your take as far as like how he's, he was able to process things, the operation, and pretty much everything else? Yeah, you know, I think there was some good and, and some room for improvement. I thought he showed timing and accuracy in some throws, and then there were a couple where I'm sure he, he wished he had it back, you know, and, and uh, pulled the trigger on a couple things. But... Overall, there was growth. He did a nice job running the line of scrimmage and huddle procedure and protection checks and things like that. So, uh, a lot of good. And then, you know, obviously, you know, some stuff that we got to fine tune. Todd, you said earlier that he does a good job of not making the same mistake twice. Are you still seeing that? And is that helping him maybe progress uh, as he works through camp? 
Yeah, I think he works hard to to improve on the things that we challenge him with, and I think practice has shown that. You know, he's had some really good, um, you know, kind of corrections in practice. And so it's been fun to watch that process with him and to work through that with him. He's such a hard worker and a high character guy that, you know, I'm excited about the trajectory he's on. Is the issue kind of distrust in what he sees yet? Is that pretty common for a guy in his first year? Yeah, I would say that that's very common for a young quarterback, particularly if the offense that you're in in the pros is, you know, drastically different than the offense you were in in college. And so some of these are the first live reps he's seeing of these types of concepts. So naturally there's going to be, uh, you know, a learning curve there. And I, I think that Malik's working really hard to, uh, you know, kind of gain that confidence in, in seeing things clearly and throwing with timing. Uh, he's talked about the matching the footwork. Sometimes he's like, I see it, I cross it, but then the feet aren't, you know, synchronized, I guess. Well, what's that process like from your perspective and how has that progressed like in camp? Yeah, he uh, he is a very gifted uh, thrower and has great ball speed, and I think he throws an accurate ball. Uh, and I think that there are probably times that he got away with some things collegiately that he's not going to be able to get away with uh, in the pros or maybe the window's a little tighter uh, than it was in college. And so tying his feet to his progressions and helping the timing there and the decision-making is going to be uh, you know, a major step in the process for him. I think he's made strides there. Uh, and I think he's continuing to work on that stuff, and, and I think that he's realizing he can trust that process. I don't know, I don't know Mike Mitchell, maybe Traylor was a little bit inconsistent on Thursday. What have you seen from him maybe uh, over the last maybe week at camp? How, how do you think he did on Thursday? I think we just need to get him to translate some of the growth we've seen in practice into, uh, into the game. You know, I think some of those young guys uh, maybe – had themselves hyped up a little bit for their first NFL action uh, out on a game field. Uh, he certainly wasn't the only one, uh, you know. But I think that we need to see more consistency translating, you know, that growth, that route craft, that understanding where you're at, and the concept, speed off the ball, all those things from practice, which we've seen a pretty good amount of with him, into the game uh, more consistently. What did Julius do to come out of it, of working with the ones after the game? Yeah, you know, uh, obviously he had the one hiccup, but after that, bounced back, uh, had some really tough runs, uh, did a nice job in protection for us. Uh, you know, he's just continuing to take advantage of his opportunities with the ball in his hands. He plays our brand of football, uh, and, and we were, you know, very pleased with some of the things he did the other night. Um, you know, came out and, and had an opportunity here in practice to to showcase some of those things with, with Derek uh, not in there in the team period. And, you know, we'll keep giving those guys opportunities as they play hard. You got to look at um, Nick Petit Frere on both the right side and the left side throughout the course of the game. What did you like about the the way that he performed, and, and what were your kind of takeaways there? Yeah, uh, similar to some of the other young guys, a little inconsistent, you know. But I think that uh, Nick is working hard to play physical to run off the football for us. Uh, I think he did some good things in combinations with with guys. Obviously, had a couple of hiccups as well. So. Uh, just got to smooth out that that uh, kind of learning curve a little bit and get him to play uh, more consistent. You know, you know, I know that's a common word that I'm using with those young guys, but uh, a lot of them fall in that same category. What did, did he kind of show that growth that you guys have seen since the spring? Did it translate into the game? Yeah, I mean, Dylan played hard. You know, he played physical and uh, with good effort and finish. Uh, and we expect that of him, especially a guy in his second year. You know, he and Brew and Corey, those guys that were out there that, you know, are, know our style of football, um, we expect there to be a, a consistency there, and we expect them to be leaders uh, when it comes to play demeanor. So Dylan did some good things and look forward to him continuing to grow. On the big throw to Racy, did Racy do anything particularly well to get open there, or was that more of a busted coverage that you guys just took advantage of? Well, number one, he put pressure on the defense with speed. Uh, he played with great speed off the ball and got into the secondary quick. Uh, he set a nice angle for Malik, and I thought the most impressive thing was how he tracked the ball, understanding where he was on the field. You know, he caught that ball right up against the sideline, and last year he may have caught it and run right out of bounds and hopefully got two feet down in the process. He understood where he was and was able to get down in bounds and, uh, you know, track the ball that wasn't an easy track. I mean, he was running pretty fast with a ball that was – tailing away from him. So. How much has your confidence in him grown these last couple weeks now based on practices and then taking something like that into the game? Yeah, he's he's doing a great job with the opportunities we're giving him, you know, and, and we try to 
commit to giving guys more opportunities as they succeed uh, around here. And and so he's gotten more opportunities and done a nice job with them. Uh, we just got to continue to harp on the details with him and some of the techniques. Uh, and I, I like uh, I like where Racy's at. What do you feel about Hassan? Uh, it looked like he was pretty active in the passing game out of the backfield. Not something he was very known for out of Michigan, but just his hands and his route running uh, and what that can bring to the offense. Yeah, he's showing a dependability and protection, which is a, a good thing, obviously. Um, you know, he wasn't eaten up in, in blocks very much, so he was able to get out quickly for the checkdowns. Had the nice gain, obviously, uh, on the four vertical concept. We ran in the red zone there and, and did a nice job after the catch, so that was encouraging to see. I thought he ran tough, um, you know, didn't show any uh, – you know, lack of contact courage. He went in there and, and got what was there in the run game, pushed the pile a couple of times. So, uh, you know, I think he's another guy that's taken advantage of some of his opportunities. Excited to see that translate here as we get back into training camp mode and, uh, you know, have some uh, fresh faces coming here in a couple of days uh, watching him stay on that course. Tom, how do you feel like Josh Malone figures into the receiver situation for him? Yeah, I think that's a, a ongoing competition. You know, those guys are kind of rotating through there in different spots. Um, Josh has, you know, done a nice job with some of the perimeter stuff we've asked him to do, and I think all those guys understand that uh, the more they show a willingness to get in there and, and mix it up in the run game, the more we're going to try to reward them in the play pass game. And so, uh, you know, searching for that commitment uh, out of that group, not just Josh, but any of those uh, any of those guys fighting for a spot, uh, it's going to be paramount, you know, that they show, uh, you know, playing our style of ball. As the backup quarterback battle heats up, I guess what are you maybe specifically looking for from Malik and Logan to see kind of who ultimately comes out, you know, as that top backup behind Ryan? Yeah, ultimately, your backup quarterback needs to be somebody that can run the game plan on a moment's notice, right? Uh, and, and that means different things for those two players. Uh, there are certainly aspects of Malik's game that if he were playing for us, we'd try to amplify or augment. Um, you know, and there are certain things that Logan does very well that, that we would be able to uh, augment as well. Consistency and dependability in their decision making is critical. Putting the ball in harm's way, uh, you know, is something that a, a backup quarterback can't do, uh, and and we've got to make sure that we're doing everything we can, not only from a pocket uh, ball security, but also throw location and, and decision making. Um, you know, they got to be able to take care of that football and uh, you know keep the offense flowing uh, as if Ryan were in there. Consideration with I guess with both those guys sometimes the track is not great sometimes they're thrown to guys who don't have a lot of experience how, how how do you weigh some of those factors Yeah you try to you try to just factor in uh, you know all those variables into whether they made the right decision and if they were on time uh, if they're making the right decision going to the right place with the football and they're on time you can understand that maybe the protection caused a little bit of a high throw or. You know, a, a receiver uh, was short on his route depth or something like that. You have to look at it objectively, and certainly that's part of the preseason process, right, is you know you're in there with kind of a mixed bag of personnel uh, and some different challenges along the way, but are they going to the right spots? Are they going there on time? And then when they're able to, are they accurate? How do you feel like things went Thursday? Well, you know, for the first time, I thought our guys were in tune with everything. Obviously, that was one of our keys going into it was our substitution and our operation. Um, our guys were into it on the sideline. I thought uh, they did a pretty good job. I mean, there's still some stuff that we need to clean up. But uh, for the most part, I was happy with them. And uh, we'll continue to try to build off of that. The split with the punters from first half to second half, what was kind of the approach there? And what did you like from both guys? Yeah, um, we think both of them punted the ball really well. Um, Brett, you know, had the first three punts. And uh, his first two were 52 yards. Out of bounds. I mean, that was that was awesome to see. He was locked in and ready to go. Um, and then Ryan came in and, and punted the ball well. He had that touchback, you know, at the end of the first half. But uh, you know, for his first time out there, we thought he punted the ball really well too. Is a fifteen racy, especially had a nice return. What, what did you like from those guys? Yeah, we thought all of them did a really good job. Um, there's still a few things that we need to clean up as far as our um, our blocking is concerned. But you know, Trenton went out there the first couple and, and did a really nice job. Uh, we like him to keep his feet a little bit more, so we're going to work on some drills with that. But it was fun to see Racy out there for the first time. Um, going in there and catching it, and we told him, "Hey, it doesn't matter where it is. Let's let's bring this thing out." 
And, uh, you know, the biggest thing that we wanted to see from him is not stopping his feet and running through any type of smoke, what we say. And, you know, he did a good job putting his head down and gaining some yards. What are some of the things you could gather, like when you get those guys out there live as opposed to out here? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot for us because we don't practice much live kickoff and kickoff return um, with one another. So those are really important for us to get that in the preseason. Um, and, uh, you know, on kickoffs, we don't want to kick touchbacks. We want to see these guys get an opportunity to go down there and make plays and try to make the team. And same thing for kickoff return. We're hoping to, to get the returns so our guys can go out there and showcase their abilities. What field position allows is... Is sort of a 50-yard punt the expectation these days? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's depending on where you're at. You know, we, we would surely love to, you know, kick the ball as far as we can with a lot of hang time. Um, but every year it seems like punters are asked to do even more. Um, so 50-yard punts are great, but we've got to have great hang time with them. Um, so you'll see that a lot during the, the preseason, us try to get 50-yard punts with some hang time so we can go and cover. Um, you know, it's interesting. I talked to Brett after the second one. I was like, you know, what's getting into you? You know, it's, it's a great punt again, but we got to see some guys cover. Uh, and he's like, hey, coach, I'm just doing my job. But um, those are always fun to see Brett hitting those like he did in the past. You have got a good number of guys that never have, have never played special teams before before they got here. What's that process like trying to get them going? Yeah, usually the rookies – hardly ever see any special teams during their time in college, unless it was early on, maybe their freshman and sophomore year. Usually they're starting, obviously, on offense or defense. So when we get them, obviously it's a, it's a big part of us of getting them going on special teams. We feel pretty lucky right now with the guys that we have as far as rookies are concerned because they played some on special teams. Um, and we just got to get them, you know, used to how we do things here. So uh, I think they've really taken to our coaching, and uh, we look forward to them in this next preseason game. When you talk about running through the smoke, how how hard is that for guys to learn typically? Yeah, uh, usually in college, if they're a returner, they're going to get bigger holes. You know, when they when they run through, you know, if they there's some double teams kick out blocks, there's usually going to be bigger gaps. Well, in the NFL, that kind of closes a lot. And uh, they're going to have to run through some arm tackles, and they're going to have to run through some holes that aren't as big. So we got to tell them, like, hey, it's one cut and go, and they got to get used to it. So we try to simulate that a little bit in practice um, and just get them used to it. But nothing gets them used to it until they go through the game. So um, it was exciting to see those guys running through some holes like Trenton did and Racy, and hopefully we get some more this week. How's Bullock been from, I guess, the time obviously started through camp and, and now on, on Thursday night? Yeah, uh, extremely consistent. Um, I think he's missed maybe three kicks um, all training camp. Uh, he, he's locked into a, a zone right now, and uh, we're excited. Um, you know, he just got to continue to build on it. His confidence is, is really high right now, and uh, we're trying to put him in different situations as far as two-minute uh, whether we got a hurry up field goal at the end. Um, he's really focused in on the 40 to 49 yards, which is doing really well. Now we got to back him up a little bit more, um, you know, to continue to build confidence in, in 50 plus uh, field goals. Shudak, what is he, I guess, doing now just so when he's cleared, he'll, he'll be ready to roll? Yeah, I mean, he's trying, you know, he's trying to get better. You know, he's in the uh, training room all the time, and uh, we'll see. We'll take him day by day and see what he's going to do. Um, you know, obviously it helps that we got Randy right now doing really well, but uh, we're still excited about Caleb, and hopefully we can get him back on the practice field.